Blessings. Blessings from burdens. Certainly, uh, you and I have heard an awful lot recently from the opponents of uh, critical race theory. Amen. Uh, many of us have heard and are aware then of the growing movement uh, to uh, deny and certainly simply not discuss then the history of America as it concerns the treatment of persons who are black and brown and more specifically those of African descent. Um, uh, you do know then that as our nation continues to experience a greater and greater polarization that this issue about whether or not we should teach or even talk about America's history as it relates to race relations, slavery, discrimination, and the civil rights movement is a good thing or not. This then reminds us that as a couple of years ago, the killing of George Floyd triggered widespread protests and a national dialogue about the cause and effect of racism in America, as well as gave birth to, again, a, a new round of anti-bias and anti-racism initiatives in America. In a self-serving effort to discredit these initiatives, right-wing media outlets have led what we can only call both pervasive and predictable in their shrill campaign against critical race theory uh, without even being able to clearly define what they are talking about. Uh, these shark attack politics, which we continue to play and see in America, certainly will increase ratings, will obscure other issues, will continue to divide America, and then now weaponized by shallow politicians have now justly uh, caused us to pause and reflect. Um, federal and state efforts are underway to ban anti-racism efforts, um, to ban efforts to teach children the truth about the founding of America and what our economy was actually built on. Uh, come on, somebody, y'all know the truth. Uh, uh, the bottom line this morning is, uh, though, that it's important for us to recognize uh, that we have uh, to face the challenge and the reality uh, of the past. Uh, many of us can probably relate just a bit uh, to this attempt to deny, uh, this attempt then uh, to denounce, this attempt uh, to push back uh, the past. Uh, I have a classmate who said and went on the record and said, I'll be glad uh, when Black people in America don't have to talk uh, about slavery and what they've been through. Another person before I could raise my hand in the virtual classroom said, and I will be glad when all of us in America can be honest about what happened in this country and the fact that racism is deeply rooted in the consciousness of America. And therefore, in order for us to ever live up to the promise of who America claims she wants to be, we must both expose and then dispose of those same foundations in our nation and in the world. Here, though, we discover something truly challenging. We discover then a desire not to deal with the past, a desire not to talk about the past. Anybody on the platform willing to come clean and say it's not not just uh, that part of white America that doesn't want to deal with the past. Uh, some of us, amen, uh, if we tell the truth and shame the devil, uh, uh, sometimes want to gloss over our past, amen. Uh, uh, we want to forget that we have a past. Uh, anybody on the platform willing to say, uh, I have a past, uh, amen, uh, and my past doesn't necessarily look like uh, what I look like today. Uh, anybody willing to admit uh, that there was a time in the past uh, 
uh, that at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, I might have just been rolling over or rolling in. Anybody prepared to say uh, uh, there was a time in the past uh, where I might have been in church, but I wasn't of the church? Uh, uh, anybody willing to testify to say there was a time in my life uh, where I was in church because I'm a drug baby? Uh, I tell y'all all the time, I'm a drug baby, uh, not because my mother was addicted to crack cocaine, uh, not because my mother dealt with opioids uh, or any other uh, drug, but because my mother was addicted to Jesus. Amen. She had made up her mind that whether it was Voices of Praise choir rehearsal, uh, Brother Vernon, uh, whether it was unit number four club, uh, whether or not uh, uh, it was Sunday school, women's ministry, I was going and there was no such thing as saying, I don't want to go. Can I get a witness uh, uh, that there was a time in the past when I had to be drug into the presence of God? Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but when I think about uh, this whole debate about critical race theory, Underneath it all is a desire to deny the past, a, a desire to bury the past, a, a desire to forget the past. But I want somebody to know this morning that we can never forget. Uh, amen. There's some things that you ought to never forget uh, about your past. Can I get a witness? Uh, every once in a while, uh, I find myself shouting. Uh, I can be in the house all by myself. Uh, and every once in a while, uh, I find myself, uh, Brother Joe Smith getting happy uh, uh, every once in a while. Uh, I find myself uh, giving God a wave offering uh, and we're not in worship. Uh, every once in a while, uh, I find myself uh, singing the songs of Zion, uh, tears running down my face, uh, not because anything is wrong, uh, but because I begin to look back uh, over my life. Uh, I begin to think about uh, some of the messes I made and how God took my messes, shifted that stuff all around, and then bought me out of it with a miracle. Can I get a witness this morning? Uh, is there anybody on the platform able to say uh, that I can look back over my life uh, and I can see some burdens uh, that seem so heavy uh, that I couldn't even handle them, and yet uh, somehow uh, here I am, blessed uh, in spite of my burdens. Uh, I wanted to stop by this morning to tell you, uh, uh, somebody, uh, that there is a blessing in the burden that you're dealing with right now. Uh, how do I know? Uh, I know because it's in the text. Uh, I know because uh, uh, our ancestors uh, can relate to the children of Israel. Uh, uh, we know something uh, about their story. Uh, uh, we know something uh, about how it happened in Exodus chapter one, uh, uh, after Jacob had found himself moved to Egypt after Jacob, who thought his son Joseph was dead, learns that Joseph is in fact the number two in Egypt. After Jacob uh, uh, discovers uh, uh, that his son, uh, his beloved son, uh, I heard Cameron Reddy reference him this morning in discipleship study. A uh, uh, Jacob who was then a, a, a trickster, uh, but experienced a change in his life. A uh, uh, Jacob who knew the burden of grief. Uh, Jacob who knew what it was as a parent uh, to lose his son. A uh, uh, Jacob who understood uh, that life was not. Uh, uh, even as uh, uh, Lacey Hughes said, uh, a crystal stare, uh, Jacob finds himself in Egypt uh, during a hard time. Uh, he's there being taken care of by his son, Joseph and Pharaoh. Uh, uh, here by the time uh, we get then uh, to the text in Exodus chapter one, uh, uh, we recognize uh, verse number six tells us uh, that we're now in a season uh, Fast forward in the history uh, where Joseph uh, and all of his brothers who he had moved to Egypt uh, 
died. Their whole generation was gone. But the word says the descendants of the Israelites had many children and grandchildren. Uh, parenthetically right here, uh, let me put a pin in it. Uh, somebody uh, ought to just give God a wave offering uh, for keeping your ancestors uh, long enough uh, to produce you. Uh, you ought to just thank God uh, that he kept your ancestors. Uh, he blessed your ancestors. Uh, many who came through, uh, uh, when we talk about burdens, uh, uh, some Sometimes I get a brother Ed Pope a little full of myself. I want to whine a little bit about my life when things aren't going well. And then the Holy Spirit reminds me that I am not only a child of God, but I am my ancestors' wildest dream. I am the embodiment of what my ancestors prayed for. I am the embodiment of what my ancestors fought for. I am the embodiment of what my ancestors hoped for. And I am, and you are, the embodiment of what our ancestors died for. Somebody ought to just be thanking God right now that your ancestors, in spite of it all, managed to make it long enough for you to come and for me to come. I don't know about you, but there's some blessing uh, in the burdens that we have to deal with here then. The word says their descendants who were the Israelites had many children and grandchildren. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that in the midst of a burdensome story, there's a blessing. Here then, the word says, in fact, they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Why, beloved, do you think ah, that there's so many people trying to deny America's past? Why do you think there's such a concerted effort uh, to undermine anti-racism, uh, uh, to undermine and dismantle racism in America? Uh, it's not amen uh, for any other reason except uh, that we are still here, amen, uh, that we still have power, amen. Uh, I, I always trip a little bit uh, as I listen to people who uh, claim, amen, uh, that persons who are black and brown, uh, those of us who are African descent uh, are less than, uh, because it's interesting to me that while uh, in their minds, a uh, part of their mind, uh, Brother Vernon Eubanks wants to insist uh, that you and I are less than. Uh, anybody ever notice how hard uh, the dominant culture is working to be like us, uh, to sing like us, uh, to look like us? Uh, now they want to have lips like us. Uh, uh, they want to have hind parts like us. Uh, uh, they want to sing. Uh, they want to dance like us. Uh, Y'all notice something about that every once in a while? Wow, how crazy that is that you hate my skin color, but you want everything that comes with it. I don't know about you this morning, but I've discovered that there's some blessing in some of the burdens that we have to bear. Somebody said, hmm, things that make you say, hmm, a Hey Amen. I know that it's right. They multiplied so greatly that they became powerful and filled the land. The Bible says eventually a new Pharaoh showed up. And that Pharaoh didn't know anything about Joseph. That Pharaoh didn't have a relationship with Joseph. Uh, that Pharaoh could have cared less about who Joseph was and what Joseph did for Egypt. Uh, that Pharaoh didn't know that it was because of Joseph's connection to God. It was because Joseph had a prophetic word, because Joseph was able to interpret a dream, because Joseph was a strategist and able to say, here is how Egypt can prepare for famine. And, uh, that Pharaoh didn't know anything, Brother John Mosley, about Joseph. Uh, he was just worried uh, that there were too many of them uh, in the land. Uh, anybody hear any of our history in this story? Uh, anybody recognize then that everything that is new is old again? Uh, amen. Uh, here then, uh, he makes up his mind. And he's got a strategy for how to deal with the people of Israel who outnumbered them, who were strong and powerful and filled the land. He decides that he's going to enslave them, uh, that he's going to work them hard to keep them from rising up in the event that there's a war and taking somebody else's side. I want you to know, beloved, the story is that the Egyptians, the word says, made the Israelites their slave. They 
they appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. Does that ring a bell with anybody's history? Uh, I know right now, Ancestor.com and 23andMe, uh, that's encouraging us to learn about our history. Uh, some of us don't need, amen, to send in a blood sample. We know our history, amen. Uh, we recognize uh, that we are not only the sons and daughters uh, of kings and queens, uh, but we also, many of us uh, on the Native American side. Uh, we know that our families were slaughtered just for the land, amen, uh, long before America was founded. Uh, we also know uh, on the African side, uh, amen, uh, that our ancestors were enslaved as cheap labor here in America. This story ought to ring true for many of us. Uh, I want you to know, though, uh, that there's a blessing in the burden. Uh, my Bible says uh, that they forced them to build the cities of Python and Ramesses. These were supply cities for the king of Egypt, but it is verse 12, uh, as I hasten to my seat, that I would lift for you uh, as a reminder that there is a blessing in burden, uh, that the more the Egyptians oppressed them, uh, the Bible says, Brother Vernon, the, the harder they uh, drove them, uh, the more they multiplied and spread. Uh, isn't it interesting in America, uh, the more folk try to deny uh, who we are, uh, the more they try to deny our rights, uh, uh, the more they try uh, to separate us as second-class citizens, uh, the more they try to deny the past, uh, uh, the more they tell us to get over it, uh, the stronger we become. Uh, I want somebody to know uh, that every once in a while, uh, the more the enemy tries to bother you, uh, uh, the stronger you become. Uh, do I have any witnesses here uh, who will testify to say uh, that when my my life uh, felt like it was falling apart uh, when I thought I wasn't going to be able to take it. Uh, all of a sudden, I found some strength. Uh, God began uh, to work in me. Uh, God began uh, to strengthen my backbone. I began to speak to the devil uh, and tell him to get out of my way. Uh, I discovered that I have mountain moving power uh, and authority. Uh, can anybody testify uh, that in the midst of burdens, uh, the Lord began uh, to move in your life, uh, that every time one door closed in your face, uh, two or three doors opened. Uh, can anybody testify uh, that every time somebody uh, tried to cap you uh, at the knees, uh, when somebody tried to undermine uh, you on the job, the next thing you knew, uh, you looked up and you were being promoted. I want somebody to know that there is a blessing uh, in the midst of your burden. Uh, anybody able to testify uh, that when your body was racked with pain, uh, uh, something going on uh, in your body, uh, you found yourself in a doctor's office uh, and you thought you were there. Uh, because you needed to be treated, uh, but you discovered uh, that while you were sitting there, uh, God strategically placed you next to somebody uh, who needed to know that God is able uh, and God used you uh, in the midst of your sickness uh, to minister life to somebody else. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, there are blessings uh, in our burdens. Uh, I want you to know, beloved, uh, that God moves his plan forward uh, through the past. While many want to deny the past, uh, I want you to know uh, that God still moves uh, in the past. Uh, no, we can't disregard it. Uh, no, we can't pretend like it never happened. Uh, the past uh, reminds us uh, how God moves, and it tells us uh, how God will move. Uh, don't you dare allow anybody uh, to deny your past. Uh, you don't even need to deny your past. Uh, even if your past is not one of a shining example of Christian discipleship. Can I tell you a secret? None of ours is. If I, amen, were able somehow for a screen to drop down for the movie of my life to be projected right now in Zoom while you all were watching the movie of my life, Pastor A would put her finger up and she would tiptoe. I would have to leave the meeting 
meeting, I need to make somebody else co-host because what's in my past doesn't look like who I am today. It's important for you to know that God moves his plan forward through your past. You don't need to deny it. You don't need to cover it up. You don't need to be embarrassed by it. You don't need to let anybody tell you that it doesn't matter. Your past, amen, becomes the launching pad for God's blessings. Lord, have mercy. We've learned in America a learned behavior to somehow cover up and to deny what has happened until we come clean about what has happened in the past. We can't be healed. We can't be fully delivered. Uh, that's what's going on in our nation, uh, why we're carrying uh, uh, so much hatred, uh, so much division, uh, uh, because we don't want to come clean about the past. Uh, I want you to know, beloved, that as burdensome as your past might seem, God has a blessing uh, when you are willing to come clean about it. He moves through your past. Not only that, God moves his plan, not only through your past, not only through the burden of your past, but don't you know that here then God will provide in the midst of your burdens. Notice here again, we are in Egypt. Whenever we hear the words Egypt and Israelites together, we are tempted to think about their captivity, but it's important for us to know that it was God who sent the Israelites into Egypt. Every once in a while, beloved, you need to know that God knows all things. God knows sometimes that he's sending you into a challenging situation. Sometimes God knows he's sending you into a difficult situation. Sometimes my God knows that he's sending us into hostile territory. Sometimes I want to be like my ancestors and my anthem becomes, Lord, how come me here? I want to sing that old Negro spiritual because I find myself, uh, Brother Danny Winborn, uh, in some places that I don't want to be. Uh, and I'm so busy whining uh, about where I don't want to be that sometimes I miss why God has strategically placed me there. I want you to know, beloved, that God provides in the places where we think we are at our worst. God shows up and God does provide. Lastly, as I take my seat, I want you to know that God moves through your pain. God moves through your discomfort. God moves through your brokenness. God moves through your burden. God moves through your sickness. God moves in the midst of family strife. God moves in times of economic calamity. Can I get a witness? God moves just when you think that you can't take it anymore. Just when you are ready to wave a white flag, just when you are ready to go in your room and close the door, never to come out again. God moves. He moves. I stop by to tell you, beloved, it's important for us to know that in the midst of life's worst challenges, here the children of Israel in captivity, not just in bondage, Reverend Mosley, but being mistreated, being driven hard. Oh, you have to read it for yourself, amen, to know the calamity that befell God's favored people. And yet the Bible reminds us that in the midst of that calamity, in the midst of what Pharaoh, the king, thought he was doing to them. God not only kept them, hear me, child of God, God will keep you, but God does more than just keep you. Can I get a witness? God didn't just keep them. The word says that the more, amen, that they were oppressed, the harder that life became. We're living in a difficult season, beloved, and I want to speak to you this morning. 
I wanna encourage you this morning. This is a challenging time for sure, but I want you to know that the Lord will keep you in this challenging time and in these changing times, but that's not all God will do. He will not only keep you, but the word of God says that God multiplied the people. They multiplied, God increased them. And so I'm speaking this morning to you, child of God, that because of what God did in sending his son, Jesus Christ. See, he knows something about the blessing out of a burden. Amen. Because the truth of the matter is, uh, Isaiah tells me he was wounded for my transgressions and he was bruised for my iniquity. Christ himself uh, was burdened with the weight of your sin and mine. He was counted as a criminal convicted in a kangaroo court, uh, caused to carry a heavy cross, uh, one that he'd done nothing to deserve, by the way, uh, marched up an old rugged hill, uh, hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. Uh, you want to talk about a burden? A uh, burden is when the very people that you heal, the very person that you feed when they don't have any food, the very person uh, that you love when you everybody else counts you unlovable, the very person that you deliver from bondage turns on you. One Sunday they are saying, ah, Hosanna, and the next the, the next Friday, a, a whole seven days doesn't even pass, uh, and they are now hollering, crucify him. He knows something about a burden, uh, amen, uh, but aren't you glad uh, that in the midst of uh, being burdened, uh, my Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels uh, just to be right by his side. Uh, anybody glad uh, that Jesus chose to bear his burden uh, in the heat of the day? Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful uh, uh, that he decided to die uh, just to save me. I'm thankful that the burden of my sin, uh, even as weighty as it was, as heavy as it was, as difficult as it was, didn't cause him to give up. I'm thankful that he didn't say, Father, forget her. Oh, I'm so thankful that instead uh, his prayer was, Father, forgive her. I want you to know that there is a blessing uh, that comes out of the burden. I understand that, uh, Sister Marjorie, uh, because after he hung on Calvary, uh, after they took him down, uh, after they placed his body in a borrowed tomb. I'm thankful. Uh, the burden that fell, uh, the burden of grief, no doubt, that fell on his mama and on the disciple whom he loved named John. Uh, the burden that fell on those who held fast to him as Messiah had to be heavy. But I'm so thankful uh, that it only took God three days, uh, just three days to move that burden and turn it into a blessing. Anybody glad this morning that God will take the thing that seems the heaviest, that seems the hardest, that seems that it is going to destroy you, and God will use that thing to deliver you to a higher place in him. I want you to know, child of God, this morning that we have a model. We know a little bit of something about folk who want to deny the past, but the truth of the matter is every once in a while, you ought to take a minute and look back over your life. You ought to really look at your real past, not the past we know about, and not the past that's on your resume. I mean the real past. And then you ought to just allow yourself to get happy in Jesus, to see that every burden, every problem, every challenge, every situation, every circumstance the Lord brought you through. And then you ought to throw your head back and say, after all I've been through, I'm still here. That was the testimony of the children of Israel. And that's our testimony today, beloved. After everything we've been through, we're still here and not only are we just here we're here and we are blessed in the midst of a burdensome time I don't know about you but I'm thanking God that the harder things get the better God moves in our lives the harder this situation and time we're living in has become look all over this platform there are testimonies after testimonies about how out of burden God has blessed. Beloved, don't ever think, don't ever think that because this is a difficult and burdensome time in your life, don't ever think that because burdens and trials come that God does not love you, that God isn't keeping you. Because in that season, beloved, I want you to know God is multiplying 
some things in you. God is strengthening you in the midst of it. God is getting you ready for deliverance. This morning, beloved, I pray that you can see that there are blessings in our burdens. God moves in extraordinary ways if we let him. God is faithful to every promise he's ever made if we let him. God will deliver, amen, in the midst of folk who just want to press us as hard as possible to deny, amen, in this nation, we even lived with the denial that we were even full people. People didn't even want to admit that we were fully human. And yet look across the platform. In the midst of burdensome times, God is blessed. I pray this morning, beloved, that you are mindful of who he is and how he works. Let your past be the past. We don't have to live in the past. But God knows every once in a while, we ought to look back and we ought to see how far the Lord has brought us from. Amen. We ought to recognize that God, he moves his plan, that his plan is deeply rooted in our past. That God knew before I was formed in my mother's belly, amen, exactly what my life would be. And I want you to know, beloved, he knows the same about you. He moves through your past. God provides in the midst of the worst, God shows up. He is faithful. And not only that, the Lord, in fact, blesses through your pain and through your struggle. In spite of it, the Lord blesses. We're still here. We have, in spite of what was done to our ancestors, multiplied. We have, in spite of what was done to them, spread. We have obviously continued to alarm people just by our presence, but I want you to know, beloved, even in the midst of that, the Lord is blessing. He's promised, and God will keep his promise. In the name of the Father who loves us, his son Jesus who saves us, the blessed Holy Ghost, amen and amen.